Thank you very much for the introduction. First of all, thank you everyone for staying until this long. Uh, today I'll present Sybil, which is an adaptive and extensible data placement in hybrid storage system using online reinforcement learning. First, I'm going to give an executive summary. Hybrid storage systems use multiple different storage devices to provide high and scalable storage capacity at high performance. We observe two key shortcomings of prior data placement policies. First is the lack of adaptivity to both workload changes and changes in device types and configurations. And second is the lack of extensibility to more devices. So our goal in this work is to design a data placement technique that provides adaptivity by continuously learning and adapting to the application and underlying device characteristics and also provides easy extensibility to incorporate a wide range of uh, hybrid story configurations. To this end, we contribute Sybil, which is the first reinforcement learning based data placement technique in hybrid story system that provides both adaptivity and easy extensibility and also provides ease of design and implementation. We extensively evaluate uh, Sybil on real systems using a wide range of workloads. We show that Sybil outperforms state-of-the-art techniques by 21.6% on dual hybrid storage systems. And in a tri-hybrid configuration, Sybil outperforms the state-of-the-art policies by 48.2%. And Sybil is able to achieve 80% of the performance of an Oracle with storage overheads of only 124.4 kilobytes. We will open source our source code on our GitHub repository. This is the outline of my talk. First, I'm going to start by discussing the key shortcomings of prior data placement techniques. Let's look at some of the basics of hybrid storage systems. Over here, we have a typical hybrid storage system consisting of a fast yet small storage device and a slow yet large uh, storage device. The, ad the address space is divided into a number of logical blocks which are assigned to an application. The storage management layer here is uh, responsible for the orchestration of host input output requests across heterogeneous devices. It also manages the promotion and eviction of data from the fast and the slow devices. So a desirable policy has to effectively utilize the low latency characteristics of the fast device while making an optimal use of its small capacity and should also provide easy extensibility to wide range of workloads. Uh, and a different hybrid storage system configuration as well. Therefore, the performance of a hybrid storage system highly depends on the ability of the storage management layer to effectively manage diverse uh, devices and workloads. We observed two key shortcomings in the prior data placement techniques that significantly limit their performance. First is the lack of adaptivity to workload changes and also the changes in device types and configuration. Second is the lack of extensibility to more devices. Let's take a closer look at each of these shortcomings. First, past techniques lack adaptivity to workload changes because they only consider a limited number of workload characteristics and which are statically tuned. And the designer expect that these uh, characteristics are gonna work for all the dynamic workloads. Over here, we show average request latency of four sample workloads, and also the average across all the different workloads we evaluated for a CDE policy, which is a state-of-the-art heuristic-based policy. And we also show RN and HSS policy, which is a supervised learning technique. And we compare these policies to an impractical oracle, which has knowledge of future input output access patterns. So we can't be better than this. So the lower the request latency, the better. We observed that like all the baseline policies provide some reasonable performance under specific workloads, while for other, they show way lower performance than Oracle. And on average, we observe a performance loss for some policy by 41.1% compared to an Oracle. We conclude that considering only a limited number of workload characteristics leads to a significant performance gap. And also these techniques lack adaptivity to device types and configurations because they do not con consider the underlying storage device characteristics. Over here, we again show the, the three policies, but we also have an, uh, another extreme case where we place everything in the slow memory, which is we refer to as the slow only. We observe that the performance of some workloads is even worse than slow only policy that places everything in the slow storage. While in another, configuration of a hybrid storage uh, system, we observe that these workloads are able to perform better than the slow only policy. 
Therefore, we conclude that high diversity in device characteristics make it, makes it really difficult to make one generic policy which will work for all different configurations. And the second key shortcoming is that most of the prior techniques are rigid. They require significant effort to accommodate more than two devices. For example, if we extend the dual hybrid storage configuration uh, to a tri-hybrid configuration, then we would have to redesign new policy to handle all the different scenarios which will come up, for example, for promotion, for eviction. So that's why you spend a lot of de designer effort and waste a lot of precious time and resources. So our goal in this work is to design a data placement technique that provides adaptivity by continuously learning and adapting to both the application and the underlying device characteristics and also easy extensibility to incorporate a wide range of hybrid storage configuration. So to this end, our proposal is Sybil, which formulates data placement in hybrid storage system as a reinforcement learning problem. Let's go into the formulation of data placement as a reinforcement learning problem. First, I'll briefly describe what is reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, it uh, consists of two important components. First is the agent and the environment. The agent observes the state of the environment and in every time step, it takes an action based on the state. And for every action, it re receives a numerical reward, uh, which is kind of a feedback from the environment to tell how the agent is performing. The agent's goal is to find a policy where agent's action in a given state leads to the maximization of the reward and which eventually becomes the agent's policy. So if you look at the formulation of data placement as a reinforcement learning problem, we have the agent, which is Sybil, and it's observing the environment, which in our case is the hybrid storage system. And the agent for every storage request looks at the feature of the current request and also the system condition. And based on these state, it takes an action. In our case, the action is to where to place the current request. And then the, the hybrid storage system provides a feedback to evaluate the effectiveness of the data placement decision. And now we will con uh, concretely define the state action and the reward for Sybil. First for the state, we use limited number of state features after performing feature selection. First of all, to reduce the implementation overhead. And secondly, we observe that RL agent is more sensitive towards the reward. So therefore like adding more states doesn't really help. And therefore we choose a six dimensional vector of state features, which has, for example, the size of request, the type of request, et cetera. And we also quantize the state representation into small bins to reduce the state overhead because you will need like a bigger um, a state vector for that. Uh, and then we define the reward. The reward is the objective of Sybil. Though Sybil can learn from any different sort of reward, but in this paper, we formulate the reward as a function of the request latency. And this in our reward encapsulates three important uh, aspects. First is the internal state of the device. For example, the read write latency, uh, whether there is garbage collection or queuing delays. And also it encapsulates the throughput as well. And if, it, if amount of evictions that are happening from the slow device. We provide more details on each of these aspects in the paper. For the action, we define the action as the selection of a storage device to place the current page. Such an action allows us to easily extend uh, our, uh, our framework to any number of storage devices. And also we observe that it makes Sybil learn to proactively evict or promote a page from the fastest storage device. We now provide a brief overview and design of Sybil. First, we discuss the execution model for Sybil. We implement Sybil in the host OS, where for every storage request, Sybil uses an RL decision thread to make data placement decisions. Sybil uses another thread, which is called the RL training thread, which runs in the background. It keeps collecting information about the Sybil state action and reward, which it uses to train a data placement policy in the background. And periodically we replace the RL decision thread policy with the RL training uh, thread policy. Our two threaded implementation allows us to run async. Uh, we run it asynchronously, which avoids the, the training in the RL training thread. Uh, interrupts or delays the data placement decisions for the incoming request. Now we'll go into the implementation of each of the thread. First, we discuss the RL decision thread, as I mentioned before, where Sybil decides the data placement of the current storage request, uh, and also it keeps collecting information about its decisions. 
For every new storage request to the hybrid storage system, Sybil uses the state information to make a data placement action. We have an inference network that predicts the expected benefits of each of the given state. And then the Sybil policy selects the action with the highest expected benefit or a random action for exploration of the hybrid storage system so that we do a trade-off between exploration and exploitation. While making the data placement decision, Sybil collects the information about the state's action and rewards in an experience buffer, which is used in the RL training thread. In the RL training thread, Sybil uses these collected experiences to update its decision-making policy online by training a separate neural network. Therefore, Sybil continuously learns from its past decisions and their, impact and their actions. To enable the parallel execution of these two threads, we duplicate the neural network that is used to make the data placement decision. So the inference network does not have a tra separate training step, and we only transfer the weights from the training network periodically to the inference network, which allows us to uh, keep the data placement out of the critical path. We now present some of our key results. We perform real system evaluation for both dual hybrid and tri-hybrid uh, systems. Over here, we show our evaluation setup, which consists of multiple different devices. We implement Sybil in the storage management layer of an AMD Ryzen 7 uh, CPU. First, we evaluate uh, for a dual uh, configuration, we evaluate the cost-oriented hybrid storage configuration in which we use a high-end SSD, uh, which is connected to a low-end hard disk drive, where the latency difference between the two devices is quite large, so it's optimized for the cost. And second, we try a performance-oriented hybrid storage configuration where we use a high-end SSD with a middle-end SSD where the two devices have similar latencies. We use 18 different workloads from MSR Cambridge and file benchmark feed and compare uh, Sybil against state of four state-of-the-art policy, which consists of two heuristic-based policies and two supervised learning-based policies. So over here, we show the performance results in terms of average request latency for all the MSR Cambridge workloads for all the different policies we consider. Over here, we also have a, a, the Oracle policy. And we observe that Sybil consistently outperforms all the baselines for all the workloads. And in, a, in the performance-oriented hybrid storage configuration, where the two devices have similar latency, uh, Sybil provides 21.6% performance improvement by dynamically adapting its data placement policy. However, we observe like Sybil provides slightly lower performance than other baseline policies in two of the workloads for this specific configuration. And we observe that these workloads are write in intensive and have many random requests in terms of both access pattern and request size. Therefore, in the paper, we show that for such a workload, we need to perform frequent retraining and also the transferring of weights from the training network to the inference network. On, however, on average, Sybil achieves 80% of the performance of an Oracle policy that has complete knowledge of the future access patterns. We also evaluate the extensibility of Sybil to more devices. As I mentioned, to, do, to, do an, uh, to extend it to a, a tri-hybrid system, uh, we had to only add a new action in the action space and, and add the remaining capacity of the new device as the state feature, that's it. And Sybil was able to figure out the policy on its own. However, we have a heuristic based policy over here, which is an extension of the previously shown the CDE policy where we had to do a lot of effort to extend it uh, because you have to handle all the different cases about when the eviction happens and the, the promotion happens. And you also need to figure out all the heuristic parameters, so you need to set those things. So however, in this case, we just let the let Sybil to decide what is the best policy. And in the end, we, we observed that Sybil outperformed this state-of-the-art data placement policy by 48.2% uh, in a real tri-hybrid system. So we conclude Sybil reduces the system architect's burden by providing ease of extensibility. All of the Sybil's uh, performance benefits comes at a modest cost of 124.4 kilobytes for, for the storage, which we need to uh, implement the experience buffer to keep all the experiences. And also we use a really small network for inference and training network, uh, network. So it's not really big. And we need 40 bits metadata overhead per page for state features. And the inference latency is only 10 nanoseconds, which is actually orders of magnitude lower than the input output read latency of an even high-end uh, SSD.
if to give you a like an example, if you think about the Sam Samsung Z9 it has a three microseconds latency. And for the training, we need two microseconds. However, like as I mentioned before, training and inference happen asynchronously and, and the training happens in the background. So it's not really in the critical path anymore. So Sybil provides small area overhead and small inference overhead as well, and is able to satisfy the prediction latency. We, we have many more exciting results in the paper, including the throughput evaluation, the evaluation on unseen workloads and on mixed workloads as well. So I, uh, for more details, I encourage you to read our paper. Now I will conclude my talk. We introduced Civil, the first reinforcement learning-based data placement in hybrid storage systems that provide adaptivity and easy extensibility, and also ease of design and implementation. We evaluated Sybil on real systems using many different workloads. Sybil improves performance by 21.6% compared to the best prior data placement policy in a dual hybrid storage system. And in a tri-hybrid system, Sybil outperforms state-of-the-art policy by 48.2%. Sybil is able to achieve 80% of the performance of an Oracle policy with a storage overhead of only 24.4%. We will open source our code on our GitHub repository. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to take any questions.